You better listen up because I'm about to give you a list for some of the most anticipated comics of next week. Hey, comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Quarter 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer. Get ready to bring you my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. And this, fans, is for 11 13 2019. And fans, hopefully, this helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy for that week. And it's never too early to put together that poll list. So, at any time, fans, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Sub to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss any content from me. As this takes this video a long way to let the YouTube community know that I exist out there, right? All right. So, before we get started into the official countdown, I'm going to talk about the book that is on the hot seat. The book that's on the fence. Maybe I might want to check it out. Maybe when I get to the store, I might just say, yeah, you know what? I got too many other books. I'm not. But this one could really intrigue me, and I could pick this one up. And this one is The Dollhouse Family Issue 1 by Joe Hill Comics. That's right. So this is DC's horror line. And they had this last book that came out, Basket Full of Heads or something like that. And I didn't try that one out. I didn't like the interior artwork, and it didn't really, you know, pique my interest here. But when it comes to the dollhouse family, this one I might give a try. Um, because what happens is there's this girl, her name is Alice, and she give, gets this dollhouse uh, for her sixth birthday from her great aunt that is dying. And the funny thing is about this particular uh, house is that it's alive and it, and it invites Alice into the house. And she's kind of like in this own world. And yet on the outside, her world is kind of just, I guess, dying. I don't know. There's problems going on out there. So it, it's very intriguing. Um, so I might definitely check it out and see what it's about. And uh, I'll let you know, maybe. So the book is 32 pages. It's $3.99. So it's not overly priced. And uh, again, might want to check it out. All right. So let's officially start this countdown with number 10. And number 10 goes to the newest X book of that week, and it goes to Fallen Angels, issue one. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is probably my least anticipated X-Men book from when these books were all announced, okay? I was like, ah, Fallen Angels? I'm like, what is it? Like, the Charlie's Angels of X-Men or something? I don't know. But when I see the team, it's got Psylocke, it's got cable and it has x23 now i like x23 but it's got young cable and i'm just like and just by the description it seems like it's a reach to connect to everything else that's going on with the x-men you know and this in my mind already right from the start i i shouldn't think this way but i'm like man i, th I think this is gonna suck i i, I don't know and we'll see what happens from it. But the description here, it says, Psylocke finds herself in the new world of mutant kind, unsure of her place in it. But when a face from her past returns only to be killed, she seeks help from the others who feel similar to get vengeance, which is Cable, X-23, Quanin, and for a personal mission that could jeopardize all of mutant kind. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with this one. It's 40 pages, 4.99. In my eyes, this is the first one that I could possibly drop. But we'll see what happens. It could surprise me. I wasn't a huge fan of Excalibur. You guys in the comments below, tell me what you thought of that book this week. All right, so let's move on to number nine. And the book that captures the number nine spot this week goes to Gail Simone's um, Seven Days issue number two. I think it's done by Lion Forge. Studios. I read issue one and I actually liked it. Now, it wasn't the greatest book in the world. It's hard to get attached to new characters or a new team, especially where it takes place in a different universe. But this was kind of cool. Uh, Earth almost got extinct in the past by this meteor. And now there's something else that landed and it was this crazy, like, ide uh, identity or entity that was like a human shaped form and then all of a sudden it became alive and it became this monster. 
The heroes of this particular universe tried to stop it. One of them died, and then it threatened our heroes to uh, for seven days. And if something doesn't happen in seven days, or I think there's seven days left to live, the, the whole world is going to die. That That's basically what happens. So it says it's only day two since their foe sentenced humanity to one week to live, but it already feels like a lifetime. So what's the long term for this story? Like, how is it going to unfold? It's still yet to be determined. It's interesting. If you guys have the extra cash to check it out, you might want to check out issue one and see what happens in issue two. Otherwise, just wait for me to talk about it. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to number eight, and we're going to move on to where every DC title this particular week has that Year of the Villain banner. It's, it's like right up there in your face. They want you to know it's a freaking Year of the Villain. And this one is Justice League Odyssey. This is issue 15. So we have Jessica Cruz now who has the power of the God. She has the Omega Beams basically captured in her ring so she can pretty much stop anything. But the new team that she's working with to try to stop Darkseid and in these new version of the Dark Gods, which was her old allies, um, things have gone wrong, okay? The Black Cube awakes and the new Justice League Odyssey team battles a massively powerful threat aboard their ship. The ship is the first casualty. Stranded in space, Jessica Cruz's leadership skills are tested to the limit as she tries to bring her dysfunctional crew together as team before they perish. 32 pages, $3.99. This book a couple issues ago blew me out of the water. I thought it was awesome. She came back too quick. You never had a chance to miss her. That's the downfall of this. Now all of a sudden she's got these great powers and she's got to somehow stop Darkseid. So we'll see what happens with it. I like the book, but it's gone down a, a little bit for me. All right, so moving on to number seven this week, guys. This one is a new number one from Marvel Comics, and this is Morbius the Living Vampire. That's right, issue one. Morbius is the living vampire, or is he more? This is an on-new going series, so it says it's ongoing. We'll see how long it actually lasts. Like, how many Morbius comics actually last in Marvel Comics, am I right? Well, we'll see what happens. There's movies going to come out soon, so... I guess Marvel's trying to pump up Morbius, okay? So, obviously, it's a biologist of Michael Morbius. He's been struggling to cure himself of vampirism. For the first time in years, one may be within his reach, but the path to it's littered with dangers and worse. So, we'll get to see what happens with Michael Morbius. We'll see what his story has to offer to its readers. We'll see. 32 pages, $3.99. It's not an overpriced number one. So, great job there, Marvel. All right. So moving on to our number six spot. And the number six spot, what's with the freaking lawnmower guys? Like they're law, they're just driving their lawnmowers down the street for fun. They're like lawnmower racing. <laughs> anyway, number six. Gotta love it. That's what you get for having your studio in your garage, right? Uh, Family Tree issue one is uh, is the book that takes the number six spot for the most anticipated this week. And um, this book is interesting. I read a preview of it and it's about this girl who's eight years old and she develops like this thing on her arm and you find out that she's basically going to be transforming into a tree. So like, why does she turn into this tree and how are they going to cure her? And if they are, are they going to cure her in time before she turns to a tree? Like, does she plant herself into the ground? What if she's traveling in a car? Does she root herself? Like, it's odd. I, I'm, this is very interesting to me. Um, the writer of this book is, uh, is Jeff Lemire. So um, I like his stories. He's a great writer. Very, very interesting. Sometimes dark stories as well. He doesn't do the artwork in this book. So I'm going to try it out. Again, 32 pages, $3.99. All right. So moving on to our top five, my number five this week uh, for most anticipated goes to Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it's not number five. I don't know. It's my number five, but I think it's issue 11. I think it's the second second um, book until it ends. I'm pretty sure. So the Universal Church of Truth is ready to raise their new Messiah 
and back in the cosmos into a new era. As his body begins to shut down, will Rocket be able to stop them and save the Guardians in his final moments? Or is this the end of the galaxy as we know it? Well, no, it's not the end of the galaxy. Uh, based off of solicits, we still see Rocket in them, so there's no surprise there that somehow Rocket survives. Now, it's been teased probably the past three issues that Rocket's pretty much dead. Every time you think he's going to die, he doesn't die. He gets in a mech, he survives, he still does battle. In the last issue, we wound up getting to see our Guardians of the Galaxy try to save Peter Quill before the Universal Church of Truth is ready. I can never say that name. Uh, it is, is, you know, ready to destroy him. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good book. Donny Cates' run is coming to an end. He's getting ready to jump on Thor. Uh, so I definitely want to see how this whole thing wraps up. I think the artwork is gorgeous in this series, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm just very curious to see what's going to go on with Rocket here in the future. All right, so moving on to number four, fans. And the book that takes the number four spot this week is The Batman's Grave, issue two. Um, there's a guy who died in this last book. And this is very much a detective-like book, right? And Batman is trying to solve this case. And Alfred is trying to warn of Batman, you know, if you don't stop, you're going to join your parents in a grave. Your grave is already made. It just doesn't have a date yet. Um, a great artwork in this book as well. I'm trying to remember who did the artist. I think it was Hitch who did the, 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 the artwork and Warren Ellis is the one who wrote it. Um, but there was a man who was murdered and the Batman is in his head and he knows how it happened. All he has to do now is survive his own deduction. Don't miss the second chapter of this new thrill written by Warren Ellis. So like I said, and Brian Hitch, 32 pages, $3.99. Great book, one of the better Batman books on the shelf today, uh, besides Curse of the White Knight, um, Chapter 2. Uh, really, really good book there. All right, so moving forward to number three. And number three is a series that I don't read at all. I just collect it for the artwork. But I'm actually going to read this issue because I want to know what this is about. This is Black Hat Annual Issue 1. You're accordingly invited to the wedding of Black Hat and Spider-Man. In lieu of gifts, please turn off all your security systems, laser grids, and counterweight giant stone traps. All this and a bonus story. I don't care about the bonus story. I want to know why in this cover does it show the cat and Batman or Batman and Spider-Man getting married? Is it an elsewhere story? Is like we've done this before, right? So I don't know what to expect here cool cover obviously j scott campbell does these covers for black cat um i just don't know what to expect here so that's why i'm so highly anticipating this else world or what if story or whatever the case may be so you guys might want to check that out if you want to have some fun all right so moving on to number two we're going on to x-men issue two um yeah this is the first number two of all this series uh jonathan hickman and Linnell francis you continue the flagship x-men title when an island full of unspeakable horrors appears on the horizon, the X-Men have their work cut out for themselves, keeping Krakoa safe. 32 pages, $3.99. We're back to normal pricing on these books. And I liked issue one. We got to see kind of what has happened with the doctor and how she dealt with the aftermath on the whole satellite thing that got destroyed and her husband got killed and then she finds a way to resurrect people which looks like she had that stone there and we got to see the summers household how logan and gene and cyclops all share a room together and a good family dynamic but now it looks like the story's going to heat up here so we're going to see what our villains are going to be how krakoa is threatened and i feel like this is going to be a lot of fun hickman's run on x-men has been great and the stories that he has done has been great so far new mutants comes out actually tomorrow that's when i record this video um for the on the sixth i'm curious to see what he has to do with that one there um if you guys want to check out a preview of that um i actually did a preview video on new mutants issue one you can check that out after you get done watching this all right so that's my number two so let's move on to number one guys and number one goes to 
Tales of the Dark Multiverse Blackest Night Issue 1. Who is not a fan of Jeff John's Blackest Night run, right? Or series or whatever you want to call it, story. Absolutely phenomenal. How would you like to get an alternate version of that story, right? I would. I think it's cool, even though it's only one issue. So here's the description that it has. What could be blacker than the blackest night? From the pages of Dark Knight's Metal comes a dark multiverse retelling of the Green Lantern event that changed DC Universe forever. Only this time, Black Lanterns win. Now, 23 days after the apocalypse, witness the rise of Sinestro as Limbo Lantern, trapped between life and death as a white and black lantern. Sinestro seeks to save the universe or end his miserable life once and for all. Joined by Dove, Lobo, and Mr. Miracle, the last living beings in the universe, will put everything on the line to give their world one final page. Uh, one final chance, sorry. 48 pages, $5.99. So this book offers a lot of dialogue for its price point, but What's good about these dark multiverse books is that there's some really key stories that they talk about. You know, it's kind of like the early days of what if comics. And uh, that's what makes these books a lot of fun. So I'm definitely checking this one out. This one is my most anticipated comic for 11 13 2019. So there are my top 10 overall. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Now it's your turn in the comment section below. Put what your top 10, top 5, top 3, number 1, sorry, spit all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anymore. Number 1 comic of the week. Hey guys, um, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Uh, you guys are great. And remember, subscribe to that channel. Give it a like. Don't forget to hit the bell. Guys, you've been watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Take care, fans.